Thank you again for joining us on our daily devotions. I hope you're having a fantastic Tuesday. Um, today, we're still in the book of Malachi. We're in the second half of chapter 1. And today, uh, before we jump right into it, I wanted to explain a little bit or expand upon a little bit about what we talked about yesterday. Um, yesterday, I told you that the book was built around seven different questions. And to go one step further, to go a little bit deeper into these questions, uh, I just want to explain that they're split up into two different sections. The first four questions are questions from Israel um, in response to God exposing their corruption. And then the last three questions are responses from Israel about how, how God is going to confront their, con their corruptions. Like, what is God going to do about it? And so that's what those questions come from. And so it's split up into two different groups, exposing and confronting. Um, and so today, as, as we go through our scriptures, today the questions we're going to kind of go through is, how have we ever shown contempt for your name? And how have we defiled your sacrifices? These are two questions the Israelites are asking God um, as he's exposing their corruptions. Um, and so at this point in time, I'm going to pass it over uh, to our youth today and let them jump right in to our daily devotion. Hey everybody, it's Molly Fosky. Um, I hope y'all are doing good and staying safe during this time. I know it's kind of crazy with a uh, different routine, whether it's with work or just at home. Things are a little different right now and I know it's hard to kind of adjust, but I hope everyone's doing good. Um, Pastor Adam has asked me to read um, a few verses from the book of Malachi. So today we will be in Malachi 1, 6 through 14. The Lord of heaven's armies says to the priest, A son honors his father, and a servant respects his master. If I am your father and master, where are the honor and respect I deserve? You have shown contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we ever shown contempt for your name? You have shown contempt by offering defiled sacrifices on my altar. Then you ask, how have we defiled the sacrifices? You defiled them by saying, the altar of the Lord deserves no respect. When you give blind animals a sacrifices, isn't that wrong? And isn't it wrong to offer animals that are crippled and diseased? Try giving gifts like this to your governor and see how pleased he is, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. Go ahead, beg God to be merciful to you. But when you bring that kind of offering, why would he show you any favor at all? Asked the Lord of Heaven's armies. How would I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so that these worthless sacrifices could not be offered? I am not pleased with you, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, and I will not accept your offerings. But my name is honored by people of other nations from morning till night. All around the world they offer sweet incense and pure offerings in honor of my name. For my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. But if you dishonor my name with your actions by bringing contemptible food, you are saying it's all right to defile the Lord's table. You say it's too hard to serve the Lord. And you turn up your noses at my commands, says the Lord of Heaven's armies. Think of it. Animals that are stolen and crippled and sick are being presented as offerings. Should I accept from you such offerings as these, asked the Lord? Cursed is the cheat who promises to give a fine ram from his flock, but then sacrifices a defective one to the Lord. For I am great, a great king, says the Lord of Heaven's armies, and my name is feared among the nations." So, what this verse kind of means to me is, first of all, Jesus sent his ultimate sacrifice for us so that we didn't have to suffer, so, so that we could be saved and um, experience his love. And I think sometimes as humans, a lot of times, I know for me personally, I can be selfish and say, okay, well, what am I going to get out of this? Or, you know, just things like that. But I think... As Christians, our heart should be, what can I do that will bring glory to God? What is what is going to bring the ultimate glory? Because as Christians, that's what we're called to do, to bring glory to God's name and to make him known. So I think um, 
that we're just called to be set apart and to be different and to not give just a little bit. We're called to give the finest, most precious things we have. Does that mean give all your paycheck? No, but it does mean that we are called to, um, you know, share what we have, that we have, what we have been blessed with ultimately. And I think that a lot of people sometimes just kind of brush it to the side and say, okay, well, when I have enough money, you know, I'll give what I'm supposed to give in the offering or I can't give 10% this week. So maybe next week I can double up and then it just becomes this vicious cycle. Um, but the Lord says that if you are giving that he will bless your name. So I think that's just something that a lot of us forget at times. But if we think about it, God has given the ultimate gift and we owe really everything back to him. Um, so that's really what I got out of that verse. I hope everyone's doing good, like I said, and um, I'll see y'all soon. Awesome job, Molly. The Israelites didn't put their all into their sacrifices. They wanted the best for themselves and just give God kind of what was left over. Does that sound familiar? But God gave the best of himself. God gave the best of sacrifices to save us. He didn't hold back and he didn't keep it just for himself. He gave his son. So we must ask ourselves today, have we shown contempt for God and defiled our sacrifices to him? Molly spoke of money and tithing and giving um, as a sacrifice in that avenue, and it is. But I think if we think just a little bit more about it, we would see that the most precious thing that we have isn't, isn't money at all, but it's time. Time is one of the most precious things that we have. Because once you spend it, you can't get it back. It's gone. And we have to realize, what have we been spending our time on? Has it been God? Or something else? So as we think about it in that sense, for far too long I think we've lived these fast-paced lives. Where we're just going from one thing to the next to the next, and we're just flying through life. I think we've been living too fast. We haven't been giving God the proper amount of time. And so now in a time where we're, we're forced to hit pause, we're, we're made to slow down everyone across the board. I pray that you've been spending more time with God. I pray that after today, you spend more time with God. And that when things pick back up, when quarantine is over, when all the restrictions are lifted, that we don't just step on the gas. But we would continue to go about our normal lives, but we would remember to slow down and to give God the time of day that He requires, that He deserves because He is holy, He is great, and He deserves our most precious, precious thing, our time. So today, as you go about your day, I pray that you would just begin to think about what you spend your time on. Do you spend it reading God's Word from your iPad? Do you spend it watching Netflix from your iPad? Do you spend it shopping Amazon on your iPad? What do you spend your time on? And how could you spend it better? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the book of Malachi and the lessons that it teaches us. I pray that as we read through it this week, as we read through it today, we would begin to examine ourselves and see what we spend our time on and see how we can change and reorder things to spend more time with you. Spend more time doing your work. Spend more time building your kingdom. Father, that's our prayer today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a fantastic Tuesday.